Hey, hey, knitters. Welcome to episode 167 of the Knitty McPurly podcast. I am your host, Devin Ventry. You can find me at knittymcpurly.com. I am Knitty McPurly on Instagram. And if you want to email me, I am Devin at knittymcpurly.com. Please thumbs up this video. Subscribe if you have not already. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you saw the podcast last week and you heard about all of the sickies in my house and I had like this twinge of like my skin hurting, yeah, I got sick. And of course, as the mom of the family, I got it worse than everybody else. Because <laughs> you have to, right? You just have to. So, um, yeah. Anyway, it is crazy cold out today. It is 22 degrees last I checked. So it was a perfect day for me to wear my everywhere sweater. Um, I love this sweater. It's great because it has these big pockets. Just today, Charlotte was like, why are the buttons on this sweater so large? I'm like, I don't know, because I like big buttons and I cannot lie. Uh, but I especially like big pockets and I cannot lie because I can put my phone in here and I can even still button it up. I love a good buttoning pocket, don't you? So got my everywhere sweater on today. Love the this aspect that we got going on. It's a very, very warm sweater. And so a lot of the time it is too warm and I'm actually getting a little bit warm right now because I'm drinking tea and... I always heat up when I talk to people. <laughs> uh, isn't this top cute? I got this from the Green Roost in um, Culpeper when my husband and I were there one time. Anyway, I'm drinking tea out of my Cody Wyoming mug from Carista over there in Wyoming. Hi, Carista. Um, got my lemon. I love lemon tea in there today with vitamin C. Whatever this illness is, it's COVID or the flu or something. I don't know what, but whatever it is, it got me real good. I've been sick for uh, six days now, seven if you count last Sunday. And um, I just feel like I'm like moving my way through it. Ugh, yuck. But the good news is it's a perfect day for knitting. And that's what I plan to do today. Hopefully you are too. One thing I wanted to mention to you right off the bat, I did not think I was going to get to talk about this because I figured it would be a moot point by this time, but the Arkansas Yarn Company retreat, which is in September of this year, the listing went up on Friday. I am going. Yay! I'm so excited. I cannot wait. It is going to be so great. Uh, I, I, met, I mentioned it a long time ago when Lindsay sent me a story about Lori, who's the owner of the Arkansas Yarn Co. And uh, I don't know why, I just fell in love with these two. I was like, I just need to be your best friend and I need to go visit you and I want to see Lori's yarn store and I just want to do all that stuff. So I'm going to this retreat. There are three spots open. I double checked right before I started filming there are still three spots open. I didn't think there would be any spots open uh, by Sunday because it went up on Friday, uh, but there are. So if you want to go, pause this video, go over to Arkansas Yarn, Yarn Company's website, and it's right on the front page. Sign up super fast because I have a feeling they're going to go quick. Anyway, that's going to be great. So all right, moving right along to progress and shop news. So I spent the week being sick, um, like totally flattened for the first few days. And then after that, like at like a subsistence level of what has to get done. <clears throat> so I don't really have much to share in terms of progress and shop news because I didn't really do anything this week. If you placed a yarn pre-order with me, re things like me randomly getting sick are why I say they'll ship within two weeks because normally pre-orders ship within a few days. But if I am knocked flat, then it takes me a little bit longer. So if you placed a pre-order, those will ship towards the middle to the end of this coming week. Thank you so much for your patience. I really appreciate that. Um, 
So the wildflower tea is coming up. The wildflower knit along. The tea is not coming up. It's a t-shirt. T-shirts don't come up, but knit alongs do. And it starts March 1st, which is in about two weeks. So that is going to be great. I wanted to tell you, because I've been talking about this for the past couple weeks, I picked my colors. I really gave it a lot of thought and I pulled out like the pants and garments that I wanted to wear with my wildflower tee. And here's what I picked. So for my base color, I'm going to be doing Jovis, which is the white, Jan the new color that came out in January. Um, I know that I'm already knitting a sweater in this color, but gosh, it's white. It's gonna go with absolutely everything. I'm not gonna be tired of it because it's a different yarn weight. I'm gonna be knitting mine in Frankfurt fingering. Um, certainly there's a million fingering weight yarn options out there, but uh, I'm, I chose Frankfurt fingering, so I'm gonna do my main color in Jovis, and then I also chose Valentine and Dusty, like we talked about, because they are just amazing all together. And then I thought, what else do I want in the sweater? So I went with Fathom because blue goes with everything. And uh, I went with Trinket because it will add a little bit of brightness. I'm gonna put the, that one down so I can hold these. And then Meadow. So I think these are going to offer a lot of good flower colors with the Jovis in the background. What do you think? So if you want to be my twinsy and you're interested in knitting a wildflower tee and you want to use these colors, I will link down below what colors they are. And if you go onto my website, you can order a, you can order full skeins and you can order 20 gram minis uh, if you're interested in twinning with me. Um, so that's exciting. I have a trip that has been so long in the works because my friends and I were supposed to take it. I actually don't remember if it was last year or the year before, but I think it was last year. It was, it's in Fort Myers, Florida. And that's where that big hurricane hit last year or the year before. I can't remember which. And that, that was the exact weekend that we were going. So we had to cancel it because of the hurricane. Uh, so it's been rescheduled for that first weekend in March. And I'm going to take my yarn with me and I'm going to work on my wildflower tea. I am so excited about it. It is going to be just so exciting. This year has a bunch of trips in it and I love to travel, as you guys know. And I'm, I'm really excited for all these trips. It really is exciting because I love that. Anyway. Uh, okay. I got a lot done on my Jovis this week because I was, I was down flat for about three days. And then when I got up, I was able to do a little bit of knitting. So I didn't get as much done as I wanted to get done, but I did get a little bit. And here I am, gosh darn, I'm right in the middle of a row again. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. And then, okay, so I got a lot done on my Jovis duster. And I, I pretty much got to the end of the stitch pattern. Um, and then I started on the bottom part of the sweater. Before I go on about that, <laughs> I just wanted to share this little anecdote with you about just how kind of clueless a knitter can be. <laughs> so I am not a center pull ball person. I tend to get my yarn from the outside of the ball. But my friend Yvonne, she's like obsessed with the center pull. She will sit there and like hand do the center pull with the this this motion, you know? And so she's always got that center pull. And the, the reason I don't do it is because you end up with this kind of wobble, the, the, the ball just gets wobblier and wobblier as you pull the middle out. And that, I don't know, I don't know. It just seemed like more trouble than it was worth. So then yesterday I had Charlotte skein up for me my last skein of Dubrovnik DK that I needed for my Jovis duster. And it had this perfect center pull. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna center pull this ball of yarn and that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm sitting there and just like filtering down through my consciousness is a thought of, 
I bet those things that go around the yarn exist to hold the yarn ball together while you do the center pull. And I remembered this beautiful thingy yarn cover, cozy thing that my wonderful friends, Barb and um, Barb's daughter, whose picture I just showed on the pop podcast, I totally know who you are. <laughs> they sent me this from, I'm sorry guys, my brain is not fully awake yet. I switched to tea too soon. Um, but they sent me this and I thought it's so cool and I love it, but I don't really know what it's for. I don't really get it. It's for a center pull ball. That's what it's for. Did you know that? You probably did. I'm probably like the only knitter in the world who really didn't think about it. <laughs> but look at that. Like it holds all of the, you know, the, the scragglies that start to come loose in and it holds the ball together. It's just so great. So anyway, um, I'm very excited about this duster and I want to talk about eye cords, which is my segue into the topic of the week. This week, we're going to talk about eye cords. Eye cord, of course, stands for idiot cord, and it was invented by Elizabeth Zimmerman, the late and great. Um, and basically what it is, if you're new or if you're not a knitter, mom, hi, mom. Uh, and it, uh, an eye cord is just basically, you know, a few stitches, two, three, four stitches, where you slide the needle back and forth so that you're essentially knitting in the round teeny tiny to make a cord. These things have tons of uses. They're good for a drawstring on a bag or anytime you need like a string, like um, if you had a halter top or something or here, like I have a string here, you know, something like that, a tie, you would make an eye cord. However, eye cords are also great for edging. You can put them on the collar of something or the edge of a cardigan or to finish something off or around the edge of a blanket. You can eye cord cast on. You can eye cord cast on in the round. You can provisional cast on and go back and do an applied eye cord. You can do eye cords on the edges of a design by slipping the first few stitches holding the yarn to the wrong side. You can do a, an eye cord bind off. You can knit something entirely without an eye cord, go back and put an eye cord on it later. Eye cords are just great. They give your garment or project a finished look in the end. And um, that's kind of why I wanted to talk about them because in the Jovis Duster, I don't use them for finishing. I use them as a design element because an eye cord gives you the opportunity to make a horizontal line, a horizontal line in a vertical pattern or a vertical line in a horizontal pattern. It gives you kind of an, an opportunity for perpendicularness in your knitting. So as I pointed out last week in this duster, the, um, let's see, the eye cord edge around here is going to be a design element because I'm going to pick up and knit a front band here. So you have this vertical element in kind of the horizontal part of the sweater. Oh, and here are my pockets. I've got the, the backs are knit, but they're not stitched down yet. So just, you know, flapping in the breeze here. All right, I'm gonna try to back up sufficiently so that you can see the whole thing. Can I? Yes. So we're almost there. I think I have about one more inch of ribbing. So <clears throat> let me show that to you up close because it's really cool, I think. I was on the fence about this because it's already a lot of knitting. And I thought if I do the bottom of the sweater the way I wanna do it, is it going to be annoying? So there's an easy fix for that if you find it annoying, you just don't do it. You just do it a different way. And there's lots of ways that you could do it that would be simpler. So <clears throat> I think I'm gonna take this to the table. 
Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. So here is our stitch pattern where we've knit the whole sweater in this pattern. And then what I did here is an I-cord bind off. So I went through, bound off the entire bottom of the sweater with an I-cord, and then I picked up to do the ribbing. And there's gonna be three inches of ribbing. I think this is about two inches, so I have another inch to go. And what you end up with is you have these vertical lines and then a horizontal line here and then more vertical lines. I personally think it is awesome. I think it is just great. I love the way it looks. It looks exactly the way I wanted it to look. Uh, I think that if you didn't want to go to the trouble, if you didn't want to have all of the work of the I-cord bind off and the pickup, what you could do is just do a couple garter rows here in in lieu of the I-cord. That way you're not binding off. You just get to the end of this stitch pattern, knit a couple rows in garter stitch, and then switch to your smaller needles. And you could, I think I would even do the garter stitch in the smaller needles and do the ribbing after that. Alternatively, you could go right from this faux rib into this real rib. That's an option too. But I just think that it's a really interesting way to use I-cords and to add to what is already a really interesting technique. All right, so here is Charlotte Shows Off. I'm starting it early because this part is fun. Hi. Hi, welcome to Charlotte Shows Off. So I made something really dumb and... Um, I don't think it's dumb. I think it's awesome. I think it's dumb. And she she's, made this. She's <laughs> She made it from scratch. Like, so, and I think this is the first thing you've ever made like this, right? Yeah, this is the first thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a duck. It's a duck sheep. Because it was partly sheep, partly duck. But Charlotte cut it out, cut out the pieces, sewed them together by hand. and Because those are just scraps. Put them I together, found. yeah. And then these are just fabric markers that I use. It's hard mm -hmm. to draw on this kind of fabric. My favorite part is how it's got like a Peppa Pig kind of face where the eyes are on the same side. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> but Peppa Pig is like on purpose. It's on purpose. Give me my duckling. Your duck sheep. So um, if you're wondering what this is, it's like his little wing piece. It's like my baby duck. <laughs> Tell us what you learned, Char. What, what did you enjoy about making him? I enjoyed no part of it because <laughs> I just wanted this to make for her. Oh, so wow. um, I love it. I gotta find a spot for it. Yes, no, it would be good by that mirror. Yeah, why don't you put like it up there? Did. Okay. All right. Um, Do you want to say? Wait. Let's wait till the end. Okay. Oh, is there more? Okay. Yes. Tell us more. I hate cutting this fabric. Oh, it's like fluffy, and it because it makes a mess. Yes, and it mm -hmm. makes a mess, and. That's the reason why I really didn't like making it, because it was hard. True. It was but hard. It's hard it was to hard. cut. But the, the good thing about hand sewing fabric like this that's fluffy is you can't see the stitches because they get buried in the fluff. Oh, yeah, because I flipped it inside out. And mm -hmm. the hole that I stuffed it with, <clears throat> um, I put the stuffing in, and then I put the head on the hole. Oh, I didn't know you did that. That was smart. Thanks. Yeah. I, like I think at one point you thought about doing legs. Yes, but I thought, how am I going to do that? Too hard. And if you're going to make it a duck and you give him a little orange duck tail. Yeah, then, that's what I did. Then his so. little legs can be tucked up under him, and he's like sitting on the water. Yes, and know what I can do? Yeah, very nice. It's like <laughs> Daylight out of this thing. Well, what are you going to make today, Shar? Are you going to do any more crafting? Because normally after the podcast, like, I make something and then here, can you hold mm -hmm. him? Oh, oh this is a leash. Yes, it's a leash. So he's like a dog duck sheep. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your dog duck sheep. <laughs> I'll say bye. Yeah, bye. bye. Wait, I want to do that. Bye. Bye. She was so proud of her little animal that she made. Uh, it's the first time she's made anything like that, so she really wanted to show it on the podcast. All right, moving on to the comment section. 
I got a wonderful comment from Rosina from the UK. Hi, Rosina. She said, Devin, thank you so much for my beautiful Valentine order. I ordered it the day that it went up and my package arrived before Valentine's Day. My husband was overjoyed as it was a treat from him. That's pretty good considering, you know, all the way to the UK. That is awesome. She says, my husband is reliant on me for most things as he has become more disabled due to NF1 and the tumors he has on his hands, feet, spine, and his brain. They are benign, but very painful. To give you an idea of life for him, he has been on morphine for 25 years. Oh my gosh, Rosina, that is just terrible. But she said, so we celebrate the little things in life. We went to church this morning and had coffee and he wore his Valentine's gift from me. Here's a picture of the, the gift that Rosina gave her husband. These are some coffee socks and some little coffee mug rugs. Isn't that so sweet? Gosh, I love it. She says, he makes the coffee at home and I tease him a bit about that being biblical because Hebrews. So you can see the reason behind his gift, the socks and coffee rugs made by me. So the Valentine's Day yarn that she purchased from my shop was his gift to her. Awesome. I love it so, so much. Uh, Emily, hi, Emily over at Knock Knit says, Devin, this duster is haunting my dreams. I simply <laughs> cannot wait. I want to do it with fingering weight Jovis holding a mohair of each of your colors so that it's like a Technicolor dream coat. Wow, that would be epic. Oh man, like I said that I wanted this to be a statement piece, but if you did that, it would be a major statement piece. Oh my goodness. From Elizabeth, she says, thanks for another great episode. The So here's what happened story made me think about my mom and all the things we made together when I was growing up mostly sewing projects, including my senior prom dress. It was purple with a lace bodice with spaghetti straps, A-line shaped, and a long flowing skirt. It was gorgeous. In the past few months, she's made me several project bags that I will cherish for the rest of my life. That is so awesome, Elizabeth. I actually made my senior prom dress too. Uh, mine was like a heavy crepe and it was yellow and I made it, it was, very like 50s styled and very plain. Uh, it was really pretty. That's really fun. I wish I had time to do that kind of stuff now for my, my kids, but alas. Linda Spencer says, another fun episode. Thank you. I hope you and your family are enjoying your afternoon knitting and watching documentaries together. You are clearly enabling many of us on the wildflower tea. I think it is so lovely and particularly liked the spring summer colors shown in the designers, the designers photos. I so want to use your yarn, but spring is brief here in central New Mexico and the heat of summer comes early. So no wool for me. I have opted for cotton viscose linen yarns. They are DK weight, but this gives me the opportunity to use some recently learned skills in doing the calculations to determine what size to knit the gauge I get on those yarns. As someone who doesn't use Instagram, I so appreciate you taking the time to share some of the pictures like Julie's Benedicta. Have a great week. I hope you don't get sick and that your kids are all well soon. Well, the kids got well. That happened. <laughs> Good luck with the, the calculations. It's a little trickier when you're dealing with color work because of the pattern, but it's just a number of pattern repeats and you can always um, remove some repeats. It just has to be a multiple of whatever the designer is using. So awesome, Linda. <clears throat> that is going to be great. I know a lot of people in the warmer climates love to knit with cotton and linen, which is great because then you can wear it more of the year. Jen B sent me a lovely story and I think it is great. She sent it in the comments, so I'm going to include it in this section. She said, 2016 is old. Oh my goodness. Fun story. I'm 43 and I tend toward golden retriever characteristics. Me too, Jen. I'm pretty loyal once I find my niche. I don't care what it is, yarn brands, food types, clothing styles, color, colors, you name it. Okay, caveat. I am loyal toward people, but not toward those other things. <laughs> I like to be adventurous with style, but that's just me. 
She says, this week I got a reminder that the loyalty I feel in my bones can be just repetition and sometimes I need to shake it up. After getting our eyes checked, my 15 year old daughter and I started looking at frames. I couldn't find any that I liked. I told the optician that I would come back if I didn't find anything in the great big open wild world of eyeglasses and we left. That night, I went to a couple other optical shops looking at frames. At one nationwide online turned in-person store, Warby Parker, that's my guess, I don't know. The hipster sales guy took one look at my frames, pronounced them quite dated, and told me to find new ones. <laughs> that's hilarious. Can you imagine? You'd have to be a hipster in like who's like 25 to have that kind of confidence. Be like, this doesn't look good fix it. <laughs> I was astonished. These, I still get so many compliments on these frames and I'm just not finished with them yet. Those frames were first introduced in 2017 and Kate Spade stopped making them in 2019. Yes, they're old. He didn't pull any punches. I did. I made quiet excuses and left the shop. I made my way to the next shop while fighting some tears. Did I mention that I'm 43 and perimenopausal? I walked in, started looking around, and the exceptionally polite and very knowledgeable assistant started asking questions about what I was looking for. He also pointed out that my frames were considered out of style by industry standards, but quickly followed up with, they look really nice on you, but let's see if we can find something to update your style some. I was floored. He was so polite. My tears quickly dried up, and as we tried on new frames, my confidence really returned. I didn't buy frames from him that day because I wanted to sleep on the huge decision that is new glasses. The next day, I returned to the place close to my home to get my daughter's frames and found the same ones I had chosen the day before. I feel kind of bad for not going to the nice place in the other town, but I'm excited to try something new. I don't think I have a moral of this story, but I hope someone out there reads this and thinks to themselves that if Gen V can break out of her loyalty, so can I and then takes that fun new step, the end. <laughs> There's a Myers-Briggs quality for this. People who tend to stick with, they know, stick with what they know and people who want to branch out and do something more fun and stylish. I remember when I was a kid, my uncle, I was like seven, and my uncle asked me if I was a slave to fashion. And I remember saying to my mom, like, what does that mean? I don't understand. And I've thought about it over the years. Uh, I don't think it's slavery to fashion. I don't feel like I am forced to participate in the new fashions, but I think it's fun to update your look uh, when you want to and when, you, when it feels good for you. At the same time, you know, do what you want, do what makes you feel good. Anyway, I just thought that was a nice little story. Thanks so much for sharing, Jen. By the way, I'm using the needles that you sent me. These, um, what's this called? <laughs> I know words, I know them. Uh, signature, these signature needles. And they are really, really nice. Uh, I don't know that they're like $80 nice, but they're nice. I like them a lot. That They're in my, in my Jovis right now. So thanks, Jen. All right, moving right along to knitting fantasies. If you follow along with Summer Lee and her socks that she is always making, she has beautiful socks and beautiful photography, great style, and just a good sense of what looks good. Like she just does a really good job with her designs and the way that she presents them to the world. So she has a new book out called The Sock Project. You can get it on Amazon. It's a little pricey. I just looked at it and it's almost $30 and it's a paperback. So I think if we wait a little while, it just came out like really recently. So if we wait a little while, we can probably uh, see the price come down a little bit, but it would be really fun to knit our way through this book. I went on Amazon and I just scrolled through the preview that you can see on Amazon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right here.
I just think that book looks like so much fun. I love the colors. I love the way it looks. I love the presentation of it. It would be something that I would enjoy looking at and working my way through. Wouldn't that be fun? Like, did you ever see that movie, Julie and Julia, where a lady named Julie wrote a blog about working through, um, I almost said Julia Roberts, <laughs> Julia Child's uh, cookbook. It'd be fun to do something like that with a book like this, where you could start at the beginning and just work your way through all the patterns in the book. Probably a lot of these patterns have already been um, published as individual patterns, but the book just looks really cute. I just think it'd be really cool. It's got all this other stuff in there that would be fun to have around. All right, so here's what happened. This story comes from a lovely podcast watcher named Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Thanks again for the second story, she says. I have another story also regarding fond memories. You might remember Kelly from last week's story, and this is the second story that she sent me. She said, my dad's mom, who I lovingly called Mimi, she was known as Mimi to many, even though her name was Marianne. She taught me to crochet when I was seven, and she only crocheted with thread and steel needles. Wow. She made beautiful doilies, bedspreads. Wow, thread, bedspreads. Oh my gosh, that must have taken forever. Table runners, etc. I started by making those delicate things, but soon moved to heavier yarns to make afghans and washcloths. I would also make many baby things throughout college. Back to the story. I gave my grandma, Mimi, many items for gifts throughout the years, and she was so happy that I stuck with her beloved crochet. I was the only grandchild of 24 grandchildren that learned to crochet. I would also crochet with her when I would visit throughout the years. She passed away in 2020 at the age of 92, crocheting right up until the end of her life. That is awesome. That's what we all hope for our lives, right? <clears throat> While going through her things, she had left me a package with my name on it, and inside were the items I had made her throughout the years. One of the items was a Tunisian blanket for a queen-sized bed that had a cross stitched on the front. I also stitched to Mimi Love Kelly. I plan to hang it on a wall using a curtain rod in my guest bedroom. Even though I don't remember making it and I never saw it displayed in her home, it's a lovely item to display now and will remind me of how much I loved my Mimi and that she taught me to crochet. That is so beautiful. Um, that's awesome. I, I can't imagine making something that large and intricate and not remembering it. <laughs> and Kelly also sent a few other pictures that really, I didn't realize this last week, that there were some pictures that went with the story from last week, so I'll put those up here too. Um, thank you so much for that wonderful story, Kelly. If you have a knitting story, send it to me. Devin at knittingmcpearly.com. Um, I will be here next week, but the week after that, uh, I will be in Florida. So unless I am able to somehow film the podcast early and get it up, probably will not have a podcast that weekend. But I will see you here next week, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend of knitting and a wonderful week ahead. All right. Bye, knitters.